There's a line in the contemporary art world, this is the line. You can paint and you can um, worship, but don't do them together. And if you step over that line, you're in essence setting yourself up for crucifixion. I am Makoto Fujimura. I am an artist and I am working on a crossway project to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. And uh, uh, welcome to my studio. <laughs> Mako is trained in an in a ancient technique. It's a Japanese technique. It's called Nehanga, but he uses it in a, a very um, expansive sense. He's looking backwards at tradition. He really spent the time learning a tradition um, and learning how to do it well. And at the same time, he's well recognized as a contemporary artist in the mainstream, you know, in your Chelsea galleries and your museums. His work is always, people, even people who don't understand painting look at his work and kind of go, wow. I don't think there's one ingredient that makes Marco's art unique it is his, his voice. He expresses in his art what his relation to religion and faith is as, as an artist. The project is to illuminate four Gospels, Matthew, Luke, Mark, and John. And each of the chapter headings will have a letter that I designed and the embellishments that go along the sides. And I have complete artistic freedom. Uh, we will use the best printing possible. So it's one of the few times when contemporary art and the Bible have, have met. I just got this uh, from the publisher, so I'm just starting to process it. I, I want to design each page so it reads consistent with the message. It, it's another way of reading the text. The New York City art community is still sort of the center of the art community in the world, which meant that he really had to engage the art market here in New York City one-to-one. Uh, -one. Very hard to do. It's really risky for, a, for an artist uh, who's working in the contemporary mainstream of art to be Christian, to be overtly Christian, because people are immediately going to make assumptions about you and what you're trying to say in your art. Within the art community, there are was always sort of a spiritual drift of things, but they didn't want anything that confined them. And they saw that uh, Christianity somehow was confinement, somehow was anti-modern, somehow was anti-development of themselves. And at the same time, the church is very suspicious of the art world. Christians have had a very contentious relationship with art, especially Protestants and evangelicals have had a really difficult time understanding what's going on in the art world and how they can be involved with it. Now, here comes Mako illustrating one of the most important cultural artifacts that exist, the Bible. And he's bringing a global perspective, he's bringing a modern art perspective, he's bringing insight uh, to scripture that's so much deeper than maybe most artists, even believers, would have. I think that having Mako's art, which is non-representational, next to the words of scripture, invites the reader to take the words of scripture and sort of see what they see in the art and how that connects with the words that they're reading. Because the words are transcendent and the art in a lot of ways uh, reflects that transcendence. Abstraction, 20th century abstraction, um, has really given me this language to tap into the mystery of creation. Everything he's been working on for his whole life, this is the, the, the reason. I was thinking about John 1 um, in the beginning was Word and word, word was with God. So John to me is that metaphysical <laughs> mystery that um, goes beyond what we can understand. He, he would want this to be just right. He's really bringing all of his art and expertise into each piece. He would want this to be just perfect. And then uh, this painting, which is Gospel of Mark, and uh, I was thinking how Mark is so much about 
Jesus talk, talking about the judgment fire. Fire is also to sanctify us, to purify us. So he's taking his craft, he's taking his experience, he's taking his creativity, he's taking his faith, and he's able to produce works that says, this is who I am. And then Luke, which is a bit more complicated and nuanced. Just watching him work and talking to him in the studio and looking at the works for the first time, and it is, um, I think it's the most fun Marco's ever had painting ever. The painting that I'm going to be starting today is, is Matthew, and that's going to be a very monochromatic painting. Azurite, Malachite, monochromatic image, blue image. Okay, here we go. If I were to put a few words in reflection of, of Marco's work, it would be his faith, his family, and um, his compassion for uh, this, uh, this world. Mako really loves artists, and so he started International Arts Movement nearly 20 years ago uh, as a way to help artists grapple with how does their art relate to their faith, how does their art relate to their humanity. Mako's given a whole group of people confidence to pursue their creativity alongside pursuing their faith. In the last 100 years, 50 years, we've um, started to reconnect uh, beauty with truth. And I think Mako's work represents a fusion of that. It's not just a, uh, a religious event. It's a cultural event. And it can become that because Mako's doing it here in New York, and he's made it in New York. And his art is such a high level that it will catch attention. I think people uh, will respond to that and say, oh, you know what? Maybe modern art is not so hostile to Christian faith. Maybe it's part of it. And you're going to find that both on the believing side and the non-believing side. You're going to say, you know, there's a new modern art in town, and you know it works. Art is always transgressive. You know, and, and I, what I always say is uh, we need to transgress in love. We today have a language to celebrate waywardness, but we do not have a language, cultural language, to bring people back, back, back home. And so everything I do, my paintings with the International Arts Movement work, everything has, has something to do with that. So I, I hope this project will be enduring. Um, that is not just a printed object, but, but it, it has a life of its own. Now, take a few moments to reflect on your own experience and how you can apply what you've learned. Then, write in the forum your insights and words of encouragement to your fellow conservatory cohorts.